Indeed, Filipinos are a happy people, but beneath their brown skin is lacerated flesh and a bleeding heart, for their lives are truly melancholy and harsh. I have seen them lambasted in foreign newspapers, ridiculed and debased by those who do not know how it is to be Filipino. This is my story. It is also theirs and maybe yours. Why did you start writing? Oh, I've been asked that question several times, but there are many ways of answering it, Jane, from a very personal point of view. If you want to be personal, first, first, it's the only thing I know. But you're really good at it. Because I wanted to be a doctor. I didn't want to go medical school. So, but most, most, most of all, because I, like I told you, I'm, I'm 93, you know, and, and uh, I know a lot about our history. And I know that so many of us, talagang wala and, and sometimes, sometimes they don't also care. Hindi lang we have no memory, people don't care much about history. And, this is one of the things I'm trying to do to acquaint people, you know, sa kasaysayan natin. Not only through my writing, but through public lectures. I've been lecturing a lot in pro bono in high schools, groups. Why do you feel na kailangan matuto ang mga Pilipino ng kasaysayan natin? It is with history that we reforbes, we cherish, we, uh, no, we, that we remember. And this is very important. Without memory, there is no nation. And that is why writers are important, not because um, they, they, they are artists, you know, but because they are the keepers of memory. The real keepers of memory. Kahit na pangit ang pagsulat nila, ha? Ha? That, that is a document that, that will remind people in the future of what these writers uh, saw, of how they participated or at least witnessed many of these events. What was the first thing that inspired you to write your first uh, book? Thinking back, uh, thinking back, I, I realized how important uh, that incident was to me. When I was 10 years old, an aking grade school teacher, uh, her name is Soledad Uriel, Uriel gifted me with uh, four books. The first is The Noli and the Philly. The second is Don Quixote de la Mancha and uh, Willa Catherine's My Antonia, all in English. Huh? Ang primero binasa ko yung ano, The Noli Mentanghere. Yeah, when I got to that portion, that very portion, where Crispin and Basilio were accused of stealing uh, by this priest, you know. No, the, that injustice touched me. Batang bata ako, ha? And I really cried. And my mother, uh, who, who was very, very important to me, not only as my mother, but my teacher was asking, Oh, why are you crying? And I said this, 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 you know. Talaga nag ako, you know. I couldn't stop crying. So, many years afterwards, you know, many, many years afterwards, nung matanda na ako, perhaps I was already in my 60s or in my 70s, I started looking back at what I have done, you know, at my work, and I realized, huh, that 
incident was so crucial in my development as a writer because uh, it gave me a very, very solid foundation on this theme that has always animated me, which is the Filipino search for social justice and a moral order. Yeah, almost all my work being, you know, is characterized by this theme, our search for social justice and a moral order. Because sa ating bayan, there are so many injustices. You know, every day you see them in the papers. No, makikita mo, and in many instances, we are inured already to these injustices, and perhaps we even accept them as part of normal life now. See? So, one of the things that I try to do as a writer huh, is to emphasize the obvious. Ito, ito ano nangyari, you know, to emphasize the obvious. You will find that our enemies are our own kin. It is they who betray us. So learn this most important lesson. In the end, our worst enemy is ourselves. Are we a damaged culture beyond repair? Well, that, that, that term was first uh, expressed by J James Fallos. He's, he's a very good friend, you know. And, uh, there are two ways of looking at it, you know. Uh, you can look at it as an anthropologist, uh, a cultural anthropologist. You can look at this as a Filipino, just a simple Filipino, looking at his own history. Wala namang culture na ano, eh, that is not influenced by other cultures. Okay. The Greeks influenced the Romans. And the Romans influenced an entire civilization. You see. We, were, we were colonized by the Spaniards, by the Americans, the Japanese, and now we are colonized by our own elites. See. So all these things you know, have impacted on our development as a people. But when you look at all these things very closely, because it's so easy to say this is the enemy, oh, the, colonialism is the enemy, or the fact that uh, we, we, we are an archipelago, we are a fractured people, and dami dami tayong mga ethnic groups, you know, and and in many instances, all this also impact you know on the country itself and di and divide us okay. so so kung ano, if you look at that damaged culture thesis as a Filipino yeah, uh, it, it has some reality to it and and the reason for that can, can be your history your geography you know and perhaps genes mismo you know or if you look at it culturally, uh, you, you can say that there is no such thing, you know, be, because culture is not pristine. It, it continually changes. You know? And when some very superior culture like that of the United States comes, you know, to a country with a very, very weak and defined culture, there is hardly any thing you can do to defend yourself. See? So, uh, as again, if you look at it uh, from the point of view of a cultural anthropologist, you say, yes, it is, you know, in a damaged culture. But kung tutuusin mo, if you look at it, and I've said this so many times, you, know, uh, you, you look deeper sa mga problema natin, and then you realize, you know, that it is not the imperialist ang mga kalaban natin. Well, our local elites, yes, because we control politics under full power. Di ba? Yeah. But 
Bandang huli, uh, it's us mismo. I believe in humanity, not just you or mother, but all mankind. Do I sound like a preacher or a cheap politician making a pretty speech? This is not what I intend to do. I believe in life, that it is sweet, and that for all its occasional bitterness, we, man, that is, are headed towards something better, fulfillment. There is much shame, however, and so much hypocrisy around us, and these inhibit our fulfillment as human beings. In spite of the fact that we are a very fragmented people, you know, because because of our geography, sinasabi ko nga, just look at Luzon, Luzon. Uh, from the top, you have the Locanos, uh, then you go down, you have the Pangasinenses, then you have the Kapampangans, and then you have the Tagalogs. And in the Cordillera along, uh, you have about eight, nine tribal groups that are speaking different languages and often at war with one another. Look at Mindanao, how the Maranaos, the Tausugs, and the Magindanaos quarrel with one another. And, and within the tribes themselves, the clan wars, you know, yung nangyari, the Ampat ones, that was part of the clan war. Okay. So, in spite of these divisions, these elements that divide, gaya ng mga komunista, the Moros, and some of our it's the groups, you know, the state has survived. If geography keeps us apart, yeah. what brings us together as ah. a people and yeah. as a nation? Yeah, well, you know, number one, the water. The water is an avenue for communication and transport. Because the land divides us, it's the water that unites us. Many people don't look at it that way, but if you look at it that way, then realize how, how true it is. What unites us is pride in our own country. Pagdananalo si Pacquiao, all Filipinos are telling, or when someone achieves a title like this universe, or the performance, the excellence of our artists and scientists, you know. When we think of them and how they achieve so much, you know, in their particular uh, professions, then that unites us, because that makes us proud. Many Filipinos are not proud of this nation. And you will find that, but of course, sometimes, Sometimes this absence of pride uh, changes. Proud ka pa ba maging Pilipino? An equivocal, an equivocal, yes. But sometimes I think about it and I I think of all the stupidities and of all the, our leaders who failed. And kung bisan na ako to myself. Huh? Not to myself, sa sarili ko. But there was a question asked of me uh, some time back. Sabi niya, what was your deepest pain? Anong pinakamalalim na naramdaman mo na pasakit? That really gave me uh, some, some thinking to do, you know. My deepest pain, well, when my mother died, when my father-in-law died, whom I loved very much, no, talagang umiyak ako talaga. But that is to be expected, hindi ba? So, in a sense, that pain is not deep enough. It's normal, it's a kind of normal pain. 
So I got to thinking about it, you know. And this is my answer now. Doon ko lang naisip after that question was asked. I was in... You have been to Japan, Shinjuku. Yes. Yeah, Shinjuku. Three levels yan eh. Ang istasyon. I got lost. Hindi ko makita yung train ko. Na I cannot read Japanese. All I know is it was orange. Orange. Martial lawyers ito ha. Martial lawyers. Orange train. Finally, nakita ko. So I boarded it. It takes about 30 minutes to go to the place where I was staying. So, no, no, so nakita ko, what, what a relief, you know. But then I started thinking na, about home, you know. And here I was, uh, away from the turbulence you know, and the sadness sa Pilipinas. Here I was comfortable in the city with all these wonderful people, you know. So, within a few seconds, tumutulo ang luha ko, and I couldn't stop, you know. Yun lang, tumutulo ang luha ko. I had to turn to the window because I did not want them to see me na umiiyak, you know. So when I got to the place where I was staying, I wrote about that experience. Lost in Shinjuku. And I used that part of my journal as the ending of my novel, Ermita. I can see my own passing, my country dying slowly, and no one can stop it, or at least Delay it till that time comes when a cure may finally be found. The fissures that divide us, isolate us from each other, are insidious and deep. The warlords, an army without vision, a government of men who in their greed think only of themselves, a people grown obsequious and pliant, vegetables without a sense of outrage, how then can we protect ourselves from our leaders, and most of all, from ourselves? Thinking back, you know, na, na, ano, na umiyak ako na, unbidden, huh? Unbidden. So I consider that my deepest pain. Has that ever happened to you? Napaiyak ka na, hindi mo alam. No. Many times. Many you times. About this country. Oh. Pareho tayo. Umiyak ako talaga. Kawawang. So sometimes I always say, my unhappy country, my unhappy country. That, to me, was my deepest pain. We read because they teach us about people. We can see ourselves in them, in their problems. And by seeing ourselves in them, we clarify ourselves, we explain ourselves to ourselves, so we can live with ourselves. What role does education play? Oh, malaki, malaki. And my regret now is that many of our teachers are not as motivated as I knew them to be in the past. First, it's, it's a learning process. The fact that uh, the same subjects are taught th throughout the school system, so, and also uh, the educational system has enabled, you know, mainly Filipinos, na walang no wherewithal for rising in the, you know, in the social scale, 
uh, with their education, they were able to, to rise. What should we be teaching our children in school today? Ah, number one, <laughs> how Jing Mahirapiane is very difficult to do. How do you make our people really love this country? The, the way we love our mothers. Kaya tawag natin mother nanda. Many people, particularly our leaders, kulang sila ng pagbamahal sa sariling bayan. They think that singing the national anthem is enough or saluting the flag or honoring Rizal on Rizal Day. No, these are outward manifestations lang. What is the logic of nationalism? The logic of nationalism is love of country. What is the logic of love? The logic of love is sacrifice. If you love a woman, if you love your family, an idea, or your country, you must be prepared to sacrifice for them. So, a man who is rolling in wealth you know, and considers himself a nationalist is not a nationalist because you don't become wealthy by being a nationalist. I'm not saying that people should not become wealthy. I myself want to be wealthy. You know, okay? But be careful with some terms because they are value-loaded. And, and, that's, and that's the best example. Okay? Anong sinakripisyo mo? What did you sacrifice for your country? When some nationalists even sacrifice their very lives. You know? Life is worth living, really, but only if we believe it is, if we believe further that life is eternal, not because the tissues last forever, but because the imagination never dies. Do you think there's hope for the oh, Filipino? Oh, yeah, yeah. That is what I always tell these young people. That is what I always tell them, you know. Kabukasan nyo ito, sabi ko, if you don't do something, then maghihirap kayo. So I always tell them, one, get involved, you know, get involved. Uh, number two, ito yung isip nyo, sabi ko, uh, think of the future, think not only of your, your, yourselves, but, you know, your neighbors, yung bayan nyo, you know. Uh, because if this, this you know, country will progress, and there's no reason why it cannot progress, because we are a talented people, you know, and we are a courageous, heroic people, then, hindi lang kayo ang mahusay ang kinapukasan, even your children will also have a bright future. Yeah. But there are so many things you have to do. Number one, sabi niya, be ex excellent in whatever you are doing. Be excellent and, com you know, compete, you know, not only with the best, but most of all, with your own self. Mismo sarili mo ang kalabanin mo. Writing is a craft. In other words, you have to be a craftsman first. Okay? You should know your grammar, syntax, and most of all, you know words. You, you must have a very, very good vocabulary. Not because mapagyabang mo yan, sabi ko. But uh, there will come a time when you have to have a very exact word to use and you know it, sabi ko. Uh, then, 
then with that knowledge then you write as best as you can and nobody can teach you imagination or creativity or intuition sabi ko and that is when you graduate from craftsman to artist but you cannot be an artist without first being a craftsman to those who want to lift this nation from the dung heap of history the past does not matter only the present the awareness of the deadening rot which surrounds and suffocates us and what we must do to vanquish it when filipinos are gone from this world uh, what will be re- what will we be remembered for i've been telling our writers sabi ko you must write very well now because these are the things that will perhaps be the legacy that we will leave behind the way Greece has Homer, the way Spain has Cervantes, and England has Shakespeare. Of course, we have Rizal, you know, but kulang yon, you know, and, and uh, whatever art we leave behind, whether it's buildings, because the, the rice terraces might be obliterated. Eh? So these are the things that we will leave behind. The, the folk epics, uh, unless they are translated into a language like Tagalog or English, uh, will all be forgotten. Okay. And this is part of the so-called cultural heritage. They don't matter to most Filipinos, but they matter to those who are interested in our history because this, all these materials form the cultural foundation of the nation. It's the artists of any country that establish the foundation and the soul of any nation. All the rest follow.